It's a delight to come and to gather together in community, to worship, to begin our week. Where two or three are gathered in my name, God is with us. Good morning, everyone. A warm welcome to those who are worshiping with us through uh, Facebook Live as well, and we hope that you too feel very much as if your, your bums are seated in the pews here and you're, you're with us today. As we gather, we are mindful of loss in our lives and, <clears throat> and, one, and, and ways in which we give expression to that is uh, some, one way that we give expression is through the dedication of bulletins. Um, and today, the bulletins are placed in loving memory of Leonard and Ethel Bowman, lovingly remembered by Austin Bowman. And certainly we remember and hold dear to all those uh, who are with us uh, in spirit, but not in body, and uh, we, we, uh, we remember them. <clears throat> and uh, talking about remembering today is the aniv 16th anniversary for the building of this particular church. Uh, and I, I, the dates are a little... They're not exact dates, I know. So, but anyway, uh, there was, uh, yeah, so 16 years have come and gone very quickly. Uh, and of course, before that, there were the other uh, smaller churches that, uh, that came together and made some really good decisions uh, to, uh, to create this one, one church here. So today we'll have uh, some of the liturgy which we'll be sharing will be around the, uh, the anniversary uh, time together as well. Um, I'm going to be away from, I'm leaving Monday uh, evening, and I won't be back until Thursday, uh, so uh, I'll not be on deck, so if you, if, uh, but if you le call and leave a message, it'll pop over to my cell phone, so I will, <laughs> you can always get a hold of me, but, uh, but anyways, I'll, I, I won't be available. Uh, also, we're looking at uh, confirmation, uh, reaffirmation of baptismal vows, uh, and uh, if there are uh, youth or adults that would like to participate in that, please reach out to me. Uh, my, uh, I'm, again, my phone number's in the bulletin and my email, and I'm, I'm here usually, with the exception of next week, uh, from Tuesday to Thursday. So, uh, so please reach out if anybody's interested, so then we can sort of correlate dates and times to, to make that happen. <coughs> um... Also, for those folk who are going back to school and uh, attending, I think it's, um, I'm looking at, yeah, uh, I think it's just Holland College. Um, there's um, a, a PEI Protestant Children's Trust Fund Scholarship uh, that, uh, that uh, folk can avail themselves of. So if, uh, if, you have, if you have a child or a grandchild or someone that you know of going into Holland College, um, there's uh, funds available and scholarships uh, uh, available, so, uh, so please let them know about that. <clears throat> I think those are all of uh, the announcements that I have. There's lots more in your bulletin to which I'd, uh, um, you can have a look at and be about those that concern you. Uh, but are there any other announcements that need to be, need to be shared? <clears throat> Yes, sir. Well, happy anniversary. <laughs> What's that? 30 years. So I bet you there's a great big pumpkin, pumpkin pie cooking, is it? Sam grows the most wonderful pumpkins, by the way. Big pumpkins, lots of pumpkins, and uh, so that's, that's my reference to pumpkin pie, and uh, <laughs> you don't like pumpkin pie. <laughs> <coughs> well, happy anniversary, 30 years. A long time to hang out with that guy. I know, I know. Any other announcements? Things you'd like to share? The candle. The candle. Oh, we'll light that in a little while. Oh, is that, oh, is that, yeah. Oh, try to help me out. Thanks, Roger. You know what? I need all the help I can get, man. <laughs> is there any other announcements? 
If not, there was a person who traveled around the countryside. Uh, some said he was an itinerant preacher, sort of. Um, a rabbi, a teacher in the Jewish tradition. He wasn't a Christian, he was a Jew. And, um, and people followed him because there was a different understanding of how he sort of interpreted who this God, Yahweh, was in their lives. And then one day, someone thought, well, who is he? We really don't know him. And they went and asked him, and, they, and he simply said, I am the light. I don't know, but I suspect that part of his thinking was the light of God that began at the very beginning of creation. In the vast darkness, there was light. In the vast darkness, newness began and hope began to shine. And so for the people who followed Jesus, they felt the light and they moved in the light. And so the light is with us this day. And may we cradle this light and hold it gently. And may we know the presence of God in worship and beyond. Let's just take a few moments to realize and feel that light in our midst this day. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to our God. God has blessed us and brought us to this time. God has blessed us and brought us to this place. In our 16 years together, our family tr tree has weathered winters, storms, periods of drought, and hurricanes. In our 16 years together, our family tree has enjoyed gentle sunshine, nourishing rains, and leisurely warmth of summer blessings. For 16 years, God has nurtured and fed us, caused our roots to sink deep. For 16 years, God has shown us grace, growing fruit of abundant varieties. For 16 years, God has made us in God's witness in the world. For 16 years, God has placed us in loving relationship with one another. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to our God. Praise the Lord for 16 years. Praise our God for 16 plus more. Praise the Lord forevermore. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Guide me, O oh, thou great Jehovah. Let us raise our voices in song.
please be seated. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Well, you're looking at me, Roger, when you're clapping, so. <laughs> Let us join together in our prayer of approach. Mighty God, we enter your presence with thanksgiving and hope. You have formed us as your people. You join us on this journey of life through valleys, upon mountains, and on the plains. We set our attention and seek your wisdom, encouragement, and grace. Reveal your will and display your glory among your people as we worship your holy name. And with Jesus we share in this very ancient prayer, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our psalm reading is from Psalm 105. Join me in the reading of Psalm 105, 1 to 6, 37 to 45, part 1 and 4. Give thanks and call on God's name. Make known to the nations what God has done. Exalt in God's holy name. Turn for help to the one who is your strength. Seek God's presence continually. Remember the miracles O God has done, the wonders and judgments God has given. O children of Abraham and Sarah, God's servants. O offspring of Israel, children of God. eternal God. Your justice reaches every corner of the earth. You are every mindful of your covenant, the promise you gave to a thousand generations. The covenant you made with Sarah and Abraham, the oath you made to us. You confirmed it for Jacob as binding. To Israel, your everlasting covenant, you declared. To you I give the land of Canaan as your appointed inheritance. Let Israel out with spoil of silver and gold. Among the tribes, not one fell behind. You spread cloud as a screen. The people asked, and you sent them quail. You filled them with bread from heaven. Remember the sacred promise you made to Abraham and Sarah, your servants. You gave them the land of nations. Next hymn is going to be number, well, it's 37 and more voices united, each blade of grass. And um, if you're able, I'd invite you to stand for the singing of the first two verses and then the last two verses after uh, my children's time. Uh, and, um, so, and then we can remain seated for the last verse.
be seated. Have you, or can you remember, because there's a lot of older folk here this morning, so I'm going to test your memories. Can you remember ever playing musical chairs? You do? I do, Roger. I do. I know. I'm not that old. I look very, very, very young. I know that. But I am much older than I look. <laughs> so, musical chairs. I remember we used to have birthday parties, and that was one of the games that we'd play and that sort of stuff. So, so I'm going to tell you, what's, what, how did you play musical chairs? Now, I was in Newfoundland, so we played it in a certain way. I'm sure it was played maybe the same, but it is PEI. You do things differently. Okay, so, so you say there's six people, five chairs, one's out. Okay, so everybody finds a chair. Any fighting over the chair? Who gets the chair? A little aggression there? <laughs> yeah. So, okay, that person's out. I wonder how that person felt when they were out. I don't know, I, I was never fast to get the chair. I felt kind of... Upset when I got out. And so what happens then? So the game's over? No, then we play again and take another way a chair. Yeah. So you keep going and going and going and one person on a chair. Everybody loses but that one person. Fastest and maybe strongest and maybe more aggressive. Push you out of the way. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, that's musical chairs. Did you ever play reverse musical chairs? What? You've never played? Okay. So reverse musical chairs is very... Roger, I'm sure you're old enough to remember this stuff. No? Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> so reverse musical chairs is you begin with one chair. And you keep adding chairs. Nobody's out. And at the end of the game, everybody has a chair. There's no winners and losers. Everybody has a place. Everybody's important. No one's grumpy or feeling belittled. You know, as I thought about those two games, musical chairs and reverse musical chairs, you know, I sort of like reverse musical chairs. Our scripture reading this morning is going to talk a little bit about not so much musical chairs, but how as per typical of this Jesus guy gets things all mixed up. Plays with our minds. I like to think of the church, the communion table, all that we do as reverse musical chairs, where everyone is welcome, where everyone is valued, where everyone has a place to sit, a place to sit around the table. I don't know about you, but when we were in my house, well, I've heard stories of um, when there was dinners, kids just were, you, you went off over there and you were segregated at the kid table. At the kid table. And uh, in my experience at home, our table was always with adults and kids and older and younger folk and everybody in between. And you felt included. And so as we look at the church and think about the church, and we have a long way, to, we've come a long way. I mean, you look at what you've done in the building of this sanctuary. I mean, foresight, and you made space to welcome all. Everybody can get through these doors and not have to clamor up over stairs that seem to, right? Um, the chairs are movable. Our communion, we don't say who's in and who's out. We say it's open. You come and share. You're welcomed. And so as we gather today as a church, an anniversary church, um, we are reminded that... Um, we play reverse musical chairs here. 
And may it always be so. May everyone have a seat. And may everyone feel welcomed. There are no winners and losers. Let us pray. <clears throat> Hi, God. Thank you for games. Thank you for the ways in which we feel included. We feel special. We feel unique. That is how you describe us and hold us. Talk to you later, God. Amen. I'm sure as you look over the last 16 years as a community, you'll notice different ways that you've changed, that uh, different ways in which you're, you move and how this building has become uh, more integrated within the community itself, how the church has changed. Change is always difficult and change is not always good, but it is good to change. And it is good to be able to be open to the change that makes life and our lives and our faith more relevant. Transformation is part of our journey. And I'd invite you to join with me in the prayer of transformation and new life as it's printed on your screen and in my bulletin. Let us pray. God of abundance, forgive us for embracing a worldview that capitalizes on scarcity Help us to know that you have given us a journey. You have created us wonderfully and uniquely. Forgive us for comparing ourselves with our neighbor when we are called to love them. Help us to embrace how you have made us as individuals who may bring our singular gifts to our common life. Amen. Beloved, you are enough. God loves you as you are for who you are, and we collectively have enough and may share in a common life where all may flourish and live in harmony as our, as our Creator intended and designed. You are free to embrace the life that is uniquely yours. You are free to embrace the love of God that, you, that surrounds you in this journey. Amen. In Philippians 1 and ch uh, chapter 1 verse 2, uh, the writer encourages us to live our lives in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether we come and see you or, I, or are absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel. May we live generous lives that reflect the fullness of the gospel, unity of the spirit, and faith in our God and in God's church. We give as we are able. We give as we are called. Your morning offering will now be presented. <laughs>
Together, let us pray. Great God, please receive our gifts for the glory of your name and the blessing of your people. May we be dedicated stewards of your abundance and use these gifts for the benefit of your kingdom. Amen. And I invite our reader of uh, Exodus to please come forward at this time and share with us. Good morning. My name is Bernie Dykerman, and this morning I'll be reading from Exodus 16, 2 to 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out of, into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepared what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to, the Israel, to all the Israelites, in the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and, fill you, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Our complaint, your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord of your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. I want to continue uh, sharing with you a story, a parable from Matthew's Gospel, storyteller Matthew. And uh, parables are funny things. They turn things upside down. They play with our minds. And they unsettle us. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for the vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. And when he went out about nine o'clock that morning, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. And when he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the very same thing. And about five o'clock, at the close of the day, he went out and found others standing around and said to them, why are you standing, uh, standing here idle all day? 
And they said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. And when those hired about five o'clock came, each of them, each of them received the usual full daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, well, they began to grumble against the landowner saying, these last workers worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have bore the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But the landowner replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. You did not agree, you, you, did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I chose to give to this last the same as I gave to you. Am I, am I not allowed to do what I chose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? Are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first. And the first will be last. Challenging words from Matthew, from the stories of those who hung out with Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, 
O oh God, our help, our strength, our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Oftentimes when I speak to people about reading Scripture, studying Scripture, those ancient sacred texts, and I inquire as to why you do such things, Oftentimes, it's in times of crisis and in times of challenging times in their lives, and they say, well, we look to Scripture looking for answers, looking for answers. I think a far better approach, it seems to me, is to listen not for the answers, because there's, as you know, if you've done any reading, there's so many answers that come out of that, depending on what you're looking for. Maybe it's better to listen for the questions, the questions within Scripture. And when you hear that, the question that is yours, then you have already begun to hear the answer. Now in our reading from Matthew today, from our parable, it is, it's the question that is most revealing, I think. It's a question that's not easy, nor is it comfortable to confront. But if we allow the question to just be with us and to sit with that question and let it become our own, it might have something to teach us. In the story, Jesus tells a landowner who goes out to the marketplace in the, early, in the early morning gathering laborers for his vineyard. And after agreeing to pay them each a denarius, a denarius would be a day's living wage, the minimum required to keep the family fed and housed, uh, housed and clothed, he sends them off out into the fields to work. Now, during the course of the day, however, he returns to the marketplace and a surprising four more times. He goes at 9 a.m. in the morning, he goes back out at noon and 3 p.m., and then at the end of the day, quitting time at 5 o'clock, a mere hour before quitting time, and he recruits everyone he finds there, promising them to pay each of them what is fair, what is right. Sure enough, when the day is over, the landowner instructs his managers to pay the laborers, but he tells them a funny and odd uh, way to do this. He says, pay them in reverse order. So he tells his manager, starting with those who work the least number of hours, ending with those who put in a full day's work. And the manager proceeds as directed and pays each laborer exactly the same amount, one denarius. Now when the laborers who started work at the crack of dawn see this, well, they become a little enraged and they protest about the blatant unfairness of the landowner. These last have worked only one hour, they say. And you have made them equal to us who have bore the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But the landowner reflects their, deflects their accusations and answers them with a question. The question, am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? There's the question. There's a question. Are you envious because I'm generous? Writer Mary Gordon, in her book, Reading Jesus, calls, uh, uh, says this. She says, it's an impossible question calling for an impossible honesty. Because yes, she writes, I am envious because you are generous. I am envious because my work is, has is not been rewarded. I am envious because someone got away with something. And she ends it with saying, envy 
has eaten out my heart. I like Gordon's up front and say it as it is. Because if this parable doesn't offend us at least a little bit, then we're not paying attention. After all, we know how the world is supposed to work, don't we? We, we know that. We live it. We work it. Time is money. And fair? Well, fair is fair. Equal pay for equal work, that's fair. Equal pay for an unequal work, that's not fair. That's just the way the world works works. That's just the way it is, isn't it? And that's how we understand it. But God, if indeed the landowner in this parable represents God, well, God is not fair. Not at all. At least not according to our cherished beliefs about fairness. This God, it turns out, does not believe that the best place to be is at the front of the line. This God isn't interested, as we so often are, in showing favor to the, to the best and the biggest and the brightest, the workers with the most elite education, the most astonishing professional achievements. God is not obsessed, apparently, with who deserves what. In fact, God doesn't even ask why some workers were able to start at dawn and others were not. All that God is obsessed about is with making sure that every last person gets a place in the vineyard. That the early bird and the latecomer, the able-bodied and the infirm, the young and the old, the popular and the forgiven, all get a place and are equal. And are welcomed. It's worth asking the question, why did some laborers end up unemployed until five in the, in the afternoon or in the evening? The parable is fairly clear because no one would hire them. No one would hire them. Perhaps they, were, they weren't as literate, uh, as literate or educated or skilled as the other folk. Perhaps they had children to care for at home. Maybe they had transportation difficulties. Maybe they were disabled or they were suffer, suffering discrimination. Whatever the case may be, the landowner doesn't ask these laborers to defend themselves. He just makes sure that every worker ends the day with dignity, with security of a living wage the capability to go home that night and to feed his family. Oh, if we too could offer a living wage to all those persons. Are you envious because I'm generous? Ask God. Or literally in the Greek translation, is your eye evil because I am good? So where do we situate ourselves in this parable? The parable reads very differently if you are at the end of the line or at the beginning of the line, doesn't it? The workers who got more than they expected, the ones who received more pay than they thought they deserved, were overjoyed at the end of the day. What they experienced that day was surprise, the possibility, pure blessing. Are you envious because God is generous? Listen for the questions. And when you hear the question that is your question, then you have already begun to hear much. Amen.
invite you to join with me in the prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Almighty God, you, we give you thanks for the work you have done in this place over the past 16 years. We give you thanks for your love and faithfulness. When we called on your name, you made your presence known to us. When we prayed, you heard us. When we proclaimed and heard your word and shared your sacraments, you have been in our midst. You have accepted our humble sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving over the over 16 years here and the, and the many years previous. You have listened to our confessions and you have forgiven us, offered us hope, offered us a new way. You have sent your Holy Spirit to heal and to comfort our hurts, our sorrows, our infirmities, our losses. Continue to empower us with your Spirit, O Lord, that we might live your gospel through our lives. Help us as we move into the next 16 years and beyond to witness to the good news of Jesus the Christ in all that we do and all that we say. May we sing your praises. May we know your presence. Show us how we may give care and support to the needy, love and mercy to the broken and forlorn. Break down those prejudices that seep into our community and to our lives and those barriers which simply divide us and make us all one in you. Show us new ways of loving one another and loving those around us. Renew us by the Spirit so that we might be challenged to move beyond our ruts, our apathy, our anxieties of inadequacy. Grant that we may continually grow in the Spirit, being rooted firmly in your love, which is unconditional. Empower us to joyfully and fruitfully carry out your mission of service and love in our neighborhood and abroad. Continue to comfort, heal, and lift up the broken and the afflicted among us. By the promise of your presence, bring us your healing love. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Bring us at last to the joy of your eternal kingdom, where with the faithful of this church, with our forebearers, our mothers, our fathers, the folk who have gone before us, and with all your saints, we may evermore praise your name. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Bless, O God, draw our hearts to you, guide our minds, fill our imaginations, control our will, and make us wholly yours. Use us as you will, to the glory of your holy name and in the welfare of your people, through Jesus the Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our concluding hymn is, Now Thank We All Our God.
the light has changed. The energy, the force is still with us. It's moving amongst us. It moves out, but it's changed. It clings to us. It is absorbed in us. Go out and cradle that light which is with us. Go out and share that light that is close and within us. Be the carriers of the light into the world that God created and God loves. And may the love of God assure us, the hope of God guide us, and the peace of God sustain us as we go receiving and extending God's grace and love in this world. Go in peace, go in love, go in the companionship of each other and the one who calls us. Amen.